How would you like to have some really gorgeous graphics for your live streams and video productions? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make nice overlays using Final Cut Pro. We will be using a very basic title from a free package from Premium VFX, but you can find titles pretty much anywhere on the internet for Final Cut Pro. Now, the foundations of this will work in many editing software. Today, I'm using Final Cut Pro because that's what people ask for. Now, the only important step is you make sure that you save it as Alpha Pro Res 444. The other thing that we're gonna do is by converting them to WebM at the end, you'll be able to use it with a sound file because traditionally Apple ProRes 444 does not carry both the alpha channel, that's what makes it transparent, and the sound for that extra sound effects. I'm Doc Rock, your content creation coach. Let's dive right in. Here we are in Final Cut Pro, and what we're gonna do is generate a new project. Now, in this new project, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call this Demo Overlay. Um, the title is sort of irrelevant. Now, under the video size, what you're gonna wanna do is select Custom. You should use the amount of pixels that you need and not too much more. For this particular demo, I'm gonna do 600 by 600. I would normally do this smaller, but this would just make it easier for you to see for this particular demonstration. And what I mean by making it smaller is you don't wanna put in pixels that you're not using because it will make it harder for you to interact with in your screen. So in other words, the average stream is 1920 by 1080. If you make your graphic 1920 by 1080, it will fill the entire screen. Anything behind that, even if those pixels are transparent, you might not be able to click on depending on your app. So you kinda of wanna crop it down to what you need. So for instance, a basic lower third is normally no taller than about 350 and about as wide as say 500. So you can make it 350 by 500 and you got room to work. Okay, for this particular purposes, I shoot in 24P, so I will select 24P. Most people automatically are at 30 or 60, again, depending on your software. For my case, I'm gonna use 24 because that's what I use. Everything else here kind of doesn't matter, except this is the most important. It must be Apple ProRes 4444. Very important, Apple ProRes 4444. Select that. Again, for the audio, kind of sort of doesn't matter. Press OK. Now we have ourselves an empty timeline. What I'm gonna do is grab a Template, this comes from Premium VFX. These are called automatic titles. These are free, so you can download these yourself. Fam, I'm not gonna get too heavy into where to get your titles from because there's about 650 million places online to get your titles from. Now, what you'll see is because this is expecting 1920 by 1080, my title is not in the right spot. So what I'm going to do is just drag this little guy and put it in the middle. Now, what I wanna do in order to give myself some room to work is grab this and make it larger. Now, you, it's gonna look fuzzy for us just due to the fact that this is a weird size for Final Cut, but don't worry, it'll be fine when you go to render it. The other thing you might do, if you find dragging this little icon, this on-screen display is difficult for you, don't worry. Use the section over here where you can scroll things with your mouse, make the adjustments that you need. So you don't have to go too crazy. The X position will control left or right. Let me undo that. The Y position will control high or low. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more room. And then once you have a feel of what's what, you can make you know minor adjustments. Even something like come in to rotate and give it a little your own style so you don't look generic like everyone else. Uh, you can do that as well, you know what I mean? So you're not really limited to leaving it exactly how the template came out. Matter of fact, I strongly suggest if you do download a template, do your own thing. Like come in here and play with this. Don't make it look like everybody else's template. So for instance, for myself, I'll come in and start getting a little bit with the, the brand colors because I think it would just look a little bit more saucy and then I'll come down here on the bottom and select another brand color. If you've been watching the channel, you've been seeing these things, okay? So now let's just modify the title. You come in the text box and let's do something like, okay, and then 
let's put all right that's and that's a true story this is the actual answer now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the font because this is not my font. I have my brand specific font. One pro tip for Final Cut. Let me move the palette out the way. One pro tip for Final Cut. Click on the font that you want. If you know your font name, just type it. It will get you there quicker than playing with that scroll because you'll be scrolling forever, especially if you have a lot of fonts. So I'm going to come in here and pick that. And then for my second piece... I'm gonna, I wish Final Cut would just automatically let me set my default fault for my brand, but it don't. And it kind of drives me batty. I'm going to change this one to regular. And then we got to take a quick look. That looks about right. So again, we can put it to the edge here and let it play. If yours doesn't play smoothly, don't worry. It will render smoothly. Um, the smoothness of the playback will depend a lot upon the power of your system and what your system is capable of. So now you'll notice the little ants at the top of my timeline have disappeared because this is now a fully rendered title. Now, again, it's going to look a little weird for now, just due to the fact that I am screen recording. And also this box here is zoomed in at 200 percent. The actual size is something more like this. Right. So it's just don't don't be scared by that because we actually picked a dimension that, you know, we felt was relevant, relevant. The other thing that kind of doesn't matter, as long as you're placed in the middle of this canvas, you should be OK um, because you'll be able to move it around in your live software. OK, so the last thing that I want to change here is maybe if this yes, this does have a little bit of glow. I'm going to add just a tiny little bit. That's kind of too much. So let's back that down just a little smidge. And then let's take a look. Glow on, glow off, glow on, glow off. I don't like it. Let's leave it off. Okay. Now, what we want to do is give it a little noise. Because with the new update in Ecamm version 3.8, we can have a little bit of noise. So... Let's add some noise. First, I'm going to drag in a sound file here and put this at the beginning, right when I see my first pixel start to paint. And then I'm going to grab another sound and let's see where I want to position this. So I'm moving my playhead right to when the line starts to kick in right there. So I'm going to add my second sound. And let's give that a look. It looks good to me. Okay, the only thing I'm going to do at the very end is I want to add a little, I guess, buffer just in case you use a free tool. If you use a free tool to generate your title, um, sometimes it can leave an extra frame. So what I did was put a gap clip, which is uh, option W here. And I'm just going to like select it and let's pull the timeline back and I'm just going to back it up. So just a tiny little bump at the end. So if I zoom into this timeline real quick, you'll see I have a single frame, just blank frame at the end. That helps sometimes if you run into a situation where the thing that you use to render this file doesn't work for you, or I mean, convert it. You can also make a copy of that and put it on the very front and paste it in. Now, depending on what you use, like I'm going to use Adobe Media Encoder to encode this properly. If you use the tool that I showed you in the video the other day, it may perform a little bit differently. Um, so I have the link for that video in there on how to do it, but in our case, we're just going to leave it. So here comes the next important part. Click on the file menu, come down to share, and it's important that you press master file. The other shortcut for that is to press command E. Once we are here, go to settings, select video and audio. If you don't have any audio, use video only. It'll make a smaller file size. Again, very important. In case you missed it in the beginning, make sure it is on Apple ProRes 4444. 4, 4, 4.
This is a very key step. So we're going to press that and then we're going to say where we want it to go to by pressing next. In my particular case, I'm going to send it to the desktop and nope, sorry. There you go, desktop and then press save. Now we're going to close Final Cut Pro. This is our file. Let me see if I can play that again. There you go. Now I can play it without the thing in a way just by hitting the space bar. And you see it looks fine. What you're seeing is on a black background, but we rendered it with the alpha channel so it will show up as transparent in your live streaming software. Okay, so now here we are in Ecamm Live, and what I will do is drag this title and drop it onto the screen, and you're gonna get two choices. Add it as an animated overlay or play full screen with audio. For this particular case, we want animated overlay. Now you'll notice that by pressing this now, I don't have any sound. Let me move this more to here. Or actually, I'll put it here so it's easier to see. You see what I mean? At this point in time, I'll go ahead and put this on loop so you can see it. It doesn't play with any sound. And the reason for that is in its native MOV format, it doesn't display sound. What we need to do now is convert it to a WebM file, and that will help contain the sound. In my previous video, I showed you how to encode this with Shutter Encoder. I'll put the card up here so that you can find it. You can also encode this with Adobe Media Encoder if you happen to be a Creative Cloud subscriber, or you can use a web tool like a convert. I find from my experience that Adobe Media Encoder encodes it to cleanest, but I understand that some of you do not have a Creative Cloud subscription, so that is where Shutter Encoder and A Convert come in. Here we are in Adobe Media Encoder. All I need to do is select my title and drag it into this queue. Now, one important step with Adobe Media Encoder is you will need the WebM plugin, which you can find inside Adobe Exchange. I already have it installed. I'll put the link to that in the description in a video of where you can find this. What I want to do is click this drop down and bring it down to WebM. And then I want to click on here on custom. And this is going to open the next window. My size is there. We know that's correct. Nothing else in here really matters other than scrolling all the way down to the bottom and selecting include alpha channel. Including alpha channel is the most important part of this process. As long as you press that, you'll be okay. Now I tend to use maximum quality, but that kind of sort of doesn't matter. And then all we need to do is press okay. Once you press okay, you need to press the play button up here and that will start your render. Here we are back in Ecamm Live. I kept the old version there. I'm going to grab the new version, which has now been modified, drop it on. And now it plays with the sound. Let's move the old version out of the way just so that it doesn't like overburden the system. I'm going to place it in a similar spot and press play again so you can see what happens. So that's it. That's all you need to do. You can place this wherever you need it for your show. I like it down here on the bottom somewhere. But now whenever I press this overlay, it'll automatically play and it will play with sound. Now you know how to create graphics for Ecamm Live using Final Cut. Again, you can find Final Cut title templates all over the planet. You can use the stock templates, whatever you want. I didn't really get into that detail. If you need info on how to do that, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video of where to find these templates, but they're all over. Literally just search for Final Cut title templates. I tend to buy uh, things from FX Factory because I just think they're beautiful and clean, easy to use, but there's Envato Elements, there's Motion Array, Motion VFX, Bread Effects. Bread Effects is a good place to get started if you're on a budget. And yes, just look around and you'll find what you need. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please press the like button, the subscribe button, and ring the bell so you'll be notified whenever I create another video. 
Now watch the video that's coming up on screen next.